Hello there and welcome. And as you may have heard, the World Championship 2019 is on its way to a Twitch screen near you on the 19th and 20th of October. That's going to be its opening weekend. The sign-ups to this amazingly large tournament are now open, as you can see here on Relic's blog. It's a tournament format overview. It talks about um, some of the stuff I'm going to go into in detail on this video, just in case you haven't got the patience to read and you prefer to hear me talk to you. Um, yeah, that's going to be that. I'm also going to show you a sneak preview of the brackets and I'm going to talk about the map decisions and some of the logic and understanding and also how those round robins work. So the round robin is going to be our take on like a group stage feel. Um, so we're going to take the top 48 players that check in on the day and we are going to put them into groups of three. And just before we go into that, I mean, why don't you say check in on the day? Surely it's just the top 48 players that sign up. No, that's not true. It's going to be a global seeding list. So you're going to take all the players that sign up. That could be 120 people for all we know. And then the top 48 from that list that check in on Discord, if that makes any sense. How that list is formed, it's going to take the top of your Axis and Allied ranks and take the average of those to form the list. Also, for the like the top 16 guys with tournament history of the last two years, we will do some movements for those guys because, quite frankly, the history exists, so uh, it would make sense to do that. Now, on to those round robins. Um, let's have a little look how the brackets look, and that should show you how the round robins fit in with things. So um, this is the brackets, and uh, that's that first phase there, the round robins, 48 players in total going through to this grand final over here. So you've got 32 on one side, 32 on the other, ending up in the grand final. Traditional brackets feel. Um, we have to use a spreadsheet format because there's a lot of information to pack in. Also, with the success of the Elite Showdown in, September, and sorry, in the summer, um, we are going to do pre-designated maps, which also makes the veto process and the whole coin toss thing a lot more simple. Um, with regards to the group phase and how it feeds into the round of 32, I'm going to populate that now with the logic. It's the winner of A goes through to the first slot, and the runner-up of A drops down to face the winner of B. A laser print screen that it should flow really naturally. You'll notice that if seed one wins as they should, they will end up against seed 32, which, if you know, in a single elimination traditional bracket is how that looks anyway. The round robin itself takes the three players, now known as A, B and C, and pits them against one another in effectively a best of two. You have the same return leg um, on the same map, that's why I call it a best of two. But the whole structure of it is these guys all sit in a group together and they won't ever play more than two games at a time, or in a row rather, not simultaneously, in a row, two games in a row. Um, so if you follow my cursor, it goes A, A, and then you've got C, C, B, B, all against their opponents alternating. And then as I say, the uh, winner of that, it's all on points, one for a win, etc. It is explained on the brackets in detail. Uh, I think this is the detailed version, not the brackets, the format overview in detail. So it's all there you to read through uh, how the maps work so as you can see for the uh, round robin we're keeping it simple it's just there was tried and tested um, tournament maps we've got that have a proven track record Feynmanville, Halodny and Crossroads however on the brackets it looks a little bit different and the reason for this is um, as I say to simplify things but also make sure that the fans see a little bit more variety so the games one and two can only ever be played on three maps that we don't see enough of in tournaments. That's Halodny, Firma, Summer, Longress, and Nexus, which is a new one. It's had a lot of work done to it in the last month to make it up to tournament standard. So it's much improved on the auto match version. Um, so you play one of those three variety maps in games one and two. And then, of course, it's back to the big bad boys of the tournament scene, Feynmanville Approach and Crossroads. How the casting is going to work for this event is, uh, for example, the round robin. If you want to cast, just talk to the referees. They'll designate you um, a round robin to follow, and then you follow all the games of that round robin. And then later on in the tournament, you start to see dedicated cast teams such as Momo for show and Tightrope. 
And uh, finally, in the finals event, it will be A.E. and Stormless. That's me, obviously, and Dan. Uh, <laughs> we will be casting from the 80 Hertz studio in Manchester um, with proven track record of amazing audio quality. You're going to have a fantastic finals event and it, it's going to give you the quality that you desire, hopefully the hype casting you need and the games you want to see. So that's the casting, that's the format. Um, as you can see, the format pretty much goes back to, to traditional standards for the rest of it. It's all best of five and it leads its way to this fo amazing finals weekend event playing for a record sum of money. How does this fit into the history of our community? Uh, well, let me, let me tell you. Let me give you a little bit of a history. I've um, got a tournament spreadsheet here. This is freely available on the internet for anybody that wants to peruse it. You can see that I've redesignated some of the major tournaments to be what I'm going to call a World Championship event. And now this is something that stands head and shoulders above all the events for that year. Everybody gravitates around it and it's a single finite competition. So that for Coming Heroes 1 is the Sunday Night Fight Season 4. But starting with Coming Heroes 2, you'll see there's one event per year that towers above the rest. The Frontline Network World Championship, Sunday Night Fight Season 5. And then later we had Operation Charlie Fox, the first big crowd-funded event. Um, followed by the Warpaint Championship, which was funded through skin sales, led by Relic. Not counting ESL, by the way, because of course that isn't a finite single event. Later on, when the t scene seemed to have died, we all rose again with a Kickstarter that I, f I um, ran, and then it turned into the Grand Championship Series, um, which was an amazing tournament, ending in ESL1 studio in Leicester with Love Ness versus DevM in a best of five series, with the uh, tall German, with a trophy aloft, in a site we'll all have etched into our visions for a long time to come. And then we had the sequel, and hell was it, Hell was it a sequel? Heck was it a sequel? I can't think of the right adjective. Fuck yes, it was a sequel! Grand Championship Series 2 was amazing last year. Um, on September the 16th, 2018, you just saw what the culmination of a, uh, a double elimination tournament, uh, all live, all the players in the studio together, when Talisman won that one with his amazing endurance-based play style. Uh, 1v1 Elite Showdown. Um, was earlier this summer and we had some other good tournaments from Momo and Tightrope as well with the Silder winning $600 uh, this summer which is pretty much the 8th place prize for this tournament so that's the history of how it all fits in you've had 6 previous World Championship standard tournaments and now finally you'll get in your, uh, your big one the one where Relic and Sega put all of their money in and, and they elevate our scene and they really show trust and faith in what this game has to offer from a competitive standpoint and use it to market the game further. Uh, so that's really exciting. It's cool to me that they're utilising community people like myself, Stern Panther, Kurahi, Tightrope, Momo, Ishtari, Ipkai Fung. The list goes on. We're all going to help make this tournament great. And you as fans are too because your viewership and your excitement and your energy is what makes it all worthwhile. And on that note, I've created a transitional hype video. I call it transitional because it's when you transition into a game, it's what we're going to show. It's like 30 seconds of awesomeness stolen flagrantly from in-game files, which were originally used for the USF and OKW announcement videos. I've added some genuine World War II noises. I'm pretty sure you can guess which one it is. And uh, yeah, it's designed to get you hyped. And uh, here it is. And I'll see you in a couple of weeks for the World Championship 2019.